Hi everyone, my name is Tara Manisic, TZ Manix on Twitter and GitHub, and I am here for the final video of our Kendo UI for View series. This is the fifth and final video. In the other videos, we created a view application with the View CLI and made it an interactive voting visualization project using the Kendo UI components. So, hey, keep it down. So for this final video, I want to talk about one, something that we also created with our application, then I wanted to cover over a little bit more, which was the fact that we made a progressive web app. And then after that, I would like to dive into some other components that we could use for the application to make it even more robust or that you could work with for future applications that you create in Vue. And then I want to talk about the resources that you have at your disposal for using the components as far as documentation and demos and forums, blog posts, videos, tons of awesome stuff to help you along your coding journey. So first of all, let's go ahead and take a look at the PWA part of our application. Progressive web apps are basically a way to take web applications and team them up with modern technologies like different APIs and different um, like caching methods and such to make your application more responsive and more um, re-engaging and a better experience for mobile users and also much more reliable. And a few of the things, uh, you get a lot actually out of the Vue CLI PWA template. If you recall, when we created our Vue application, we did Vue init PWA. This is what that template is and it's under Vue.js-templates PWA. And I wanted to point out two parts of it. So if you look through here, you'll get a lot of good information. But under here, they talk about what's included, and it's service worker with pre-caching of the static assets, and that's um, one thing that we could have taken advantage of. The service worker, basically what you're getting out of it is offline capabilities because it's caching your static assets um, and your application shell if you format it that way. And also the web application manifest, which is a JSON file that tells the browser how to display your application, especially when people uh, click to install your application on their home screen of their device. So taking a look at our application that we made, you can see inside of your static directory, there is a manifest.json file that's already there. And one thing that's pretty cool about this is that part of it's already populated with the information we gave it when we did view init. And that's the name and the short name. If you recall, we used amazing emojis for our short names since they're supported. And then there's even more information in here, like the icons, which you can set yourself. They give you um, holder icons that are the view icon. But you can set these yourself. And these are the applications that will appear on a device's home screen if, they, if the user decides to install your application. Under that, the start URL just basically says, this is where I want the application to open up when the user clicks it from the home screen to open up the application, where should we go? Next is the display, which here we have standalone. The other option is browser. Standalone gives you a full screen application. It gets rid of the browser Chrome. And below it, the background color and theme color are different ways to, the background color gives um, a color when your application is loading so that the user understands something is happening. And the theme color, um, you can set this in your main HTML as well, that is basically different things like uh, with Android, it's the border around your application when it's in a list and search bars, things like that, to kind of theme out your application to give it its own identity. Next, I want to take a look inside of your build directory. And in here, you see we have two service worker files. Again, these are just JavaScript files. So whenever you hear service worker, sometimes people are like, oh, service worker, because they can do a lot. But remember, they are just JavaScript files. So there's a dev and a production version of this. So we'll look at the production version just to show you real quickly that 
there are a ton of comments in here that will explain a lot about what's going on and what's happening with this service worker. So I highly recommend, if you've never worked with service workers, checking this out. Um, in the meantime, you will get the benefits from it. Um, but it's always best to understand how you're getting those benefits, right? On with the video, moving on from progressive web apps, I want to talk to you about a bunch of components that we did not take advantage of yet with this project, yet, <laughs> that are really awesome. So there's a really long list, uh, but I wanted to point out a few, and I couldn't help but point out this very first one because uh, we have needed this for different conferences that we go to where we need a QR code. And it is awesome to me that it's part of our library that it comes out looking great with just these few lines of code. So I also wanted to let you know that now that you have worked with a few of our components, you have a very good understanding of how to use all of the components because you take a lot of the same steps with each one. Basically, you are going to NPM and installing the library, the module, and then you go into your main JS and import the ones that you need. So for instance, you can see here that with our date inputs, with the date inputs library, there's calendar, date input, date picker, date time picker, and time picker. But if you just wanted one or two of those, you only need to import those. You can be specific about it or import the whole library to your heart's desire. So again, this is a very long list, but um, some that I'd like to point out, our grid is by far our most used and discussed component. People love the grid. And uh, it also ties in to the scheduler. So a lot of these applications are kind of a bundling, or components are the bundling of other components. And the scheduler is really great, and we get a lot of requests for the scheduler. It has really great interactions um, and lets users do a lot inside of that component with not too much work. So as you can see, as I'm going through each of these components, you can see that we were able to look at the example of what the component looks like and see the interactions, see how um, different animations and things happen as you click around in it. But then you can also click to the source code and see what the code you're writing is going to look like, which, how you, how you build that component inside of your template, and then also the data that needs to be passed through to that component. Um, and then there's even more information of how to initialize it with Webpack, and then it guides you through the different events and the different things that you'll use with it, all inside of the documentation. And another feature that I'm a big fan of is the fact that you can open it to have a live demo of what it looks like. So you can mess around and break code and see what happens when you change things, which uh, which there is a tweet, you know, what happens when I change things is basically how I program. <laughs> so this gives you the opportunity to do that, to change things, possibly break things, and then start all over again. So that is our long list of components. There are a lot out there, and I recommend even just going through the documentation and checking them all out, playing around with all of them. That being said, whenever this video is released, who knows what more <laughs> components there might be. So I also wanted to take you to our roadmap and let you know that this is another great place to take a look to see what's coming down the road and always be up to date with things that are coming. A great, great resource that I'm a big fan of are our demo pages. And on here, on demos.telerg, there is a very, very long list of practically all the Kendo UI components that you can take a look at and again go through and see the basic usage of the components, uh, mess around with how your users will interact with the components, but also get a lot of the information of how to build out these components for yourself. 
When you are building for yourself, sometimes things aren't covered in documentation and demos and you have a question. We have a really great demos or forum, a very great forum where you can go in and not only talk to, as you can see, we have a lot of the team going in and answering questions. So not only can you talk to the team about certain questions you have about certain components, but people using these components are also there to talk to you about what's going on and if you have any questions. So you have a community to lean on, which is always nice. Then when you want to uh, dive in more, get more information, we have our blogs at Teller.com blogs. And these will give you not only a way to see how to put into play the different components, but also the everything that's happening in technology around uh, what we're using. So Vue, Angular, React, uh, Xamarin, all kinds of information on here that may give you even more ideas of what to mess with around with. And if you want even more information about PWS with Vue, we have an amazing blog post right here by Brandon Satram. <laughs> so if you think of it, we're happy to write about it, happy to do things on it. And the very last resource that I would like to talk to you about is something that you should be quite familiar with already because you're here watching this video. <laughs> but we have a ton of videos on YouTube on our Kendo UI channel that cover this, the different releases of our Kendo UI library, what's coming out, what's brand new, and a great way to keep up to date with all of our new releases and what's coming out. So again, please feel free to reach out to us um, on Twitter at Kendo UI and me at TZ Mannix. We are always more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. And we want to make this coding journey for you with Kendo UI and Vue as painless and fast and awesome as possible. So if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out. And thank you so much for joining me on this Kendo UI for Vue journey. Hope to see you soon. Toshi, say bye.